Hi everybody, it's Richard McMunn here from the psychometric testing company howtobecome.com and in this video I'm going to teach you how to pass psychometric tests so if you have any kind of test coming up then this video is guaranteed to help you improve and increase your scores. So welcome to this tutorial. As I say, my name is Richard McMahon. I've been helping people like you for about 20 years now. And in this particular video, I will teach you how to pass your psychometric test. And in particular, I'm gonna give you some really important tips to help you score high. I am also gonna walk through some sample psychometric test questions with you. Then I'm going to give you some questions to try yourself and then I'm also going to give you some free further resources to help you further improve your scores. Sound good? Fantastic. Well, please make sure you do subscribe to the video if you haven't done so already because then you'll get notified as soon as I create more videos like this. I'm doing them all the time now every week and also if you do enjoy the tutorial I would very very much appreciate it if you gave the video a like a thumbs up because that motivates me to do more. Okay first and foremost before we get into the test questions five really important tips for passing any kind of psychometric test. Tip number one obviously the more you practice the better your scores will be. But, and this is important, please do make sure you practice under timed conditions. So whether you've got a stopwatch or a smartphone, because there is a stopwatch on an iPhone or other smartphones, then please make sure you use it. And I will tell you in a second what time to set each question at. Now tip number two, make sure when you are tackling psychometric tests that you aim for speed, so work as quickly as you can, but also be as accurate as you can. What I mean is no wild guessing because most tests are designed so you cannot finish them within the allocated or allotted time frame. So people go, uh, they work through psychometric tests and they get concerned thinking, I'm never gonna finish the test, that doesn't matter. What is important is speed and accuracy. So get as many questions answered as possible, but the ones that you do do, make sure they are accurate because you can lose marks for inaccurate answers because most of the psychometric tests that you'll undertake will be multiple choice. So you'll probably get four or five option answers to choose from. And a lot of people guess if they've got say 10 questions left and they're running out of time, they will just simply guess them hoping that they'll get a couple of correct. So what a lot of test providers are starting to do is to penalize you if you get incorrect answers. Tip number three, check to see whether or not you can use a calculator before the test. Now if you can, make sure you practice with one, but also make sure you know how to use one too. Some people don't know how to use calculators to work out in particular things like percentages and also the square root, etc. Tip number four, calculate the average time you have per question during the real test and only allow yourself that amount of time per question when practicing. Well, so what do I mean by that? Well, let's say the test that you're undertaking, there's 30 questions in the particular psychometric test and they give you 20 minutes to complete the entire test. Well, if you calculate 20 minutes, which is 60 seconds per minute, that gives you 1,200 seconds in total. If you divide that by the 30 questions, that gives you 40 seconds per question. So if you practice based on a maximum of 40 seconds per question, then you will improve your ability to complete as many questions as possible in this particular test. So what you don't want to be doing is to be taking a minute per one when you're practicing. So get used to that actual particular time frame per question. Tip number five before we get into the sample questions. If you miss a question, leave a space on the answer or marking sheet. So let's say that's your multiple choice answer sheet. You've got question one, question two, question three, and the multiple choice options are A, B, C, D, and E for each one. So for say question one, you choose B, so you mark it on the sheet or online, and then you don't know the answer to question two or it's taking too long, you decide to leave it. Make sure you skip that part of the sheet and move on to question number three where you might select C. Because what has happened quite often in the past is people would move on from question two and then they would put C there for question two and then that puts the entire marking sheet out of sync and you fail the test. So very important to make sure you actually miss that space on the marking sheet because you can always come back to it later on. Okay, let's now take a look at a number of common psychometric test questions. And in particular, we're going to take a look at numerical reasoning test, verbal reasoning test questions, 
some abstract reasoning ones as well, mechanical comprehension, and also spatial reasoning. And then these are the more common types that you would have to undertake during a psychometric test. So let's get straight into it. Question number one, which two numbers come next in the sequence? This is a common type of numerical reasoning psychometric test question. So we're presented with number one, 11, 8, 18, 15, 25, and then we have two spaces there. And these are the numbers we have to work out which come next in the sequence. And it gives us multiple choice options. A, 27 or 45, B, 27 or 40, C, 30, 35, D, 22 or 44, or E, 22 and 32. And we have to decide which two numbers come there. So how do we tackle this question? What you have to do is look for sequences and patterns based on addition, subtraction, multiplication or division. So if we take there the odd numbers, number one, number three and number five, you will see that they are increasing by seven each time. So one plus seven is eight, eight plus seven is 15, and 15 plus 7 is 22. If we then take the even numbers, 11, 18 and 25, you'll see that they are also increasing by 7. So 11 plus 7 is 18, 18 plus 7 is 25, therefore 25 plus 7 is 32, and therefore the correct answer is E. So as you practice these, you'll become more competent with them, and therefore I'd like you to have a go at question number 2. So I'm going to put it up in a second, and you'll see a timer on the page and I'm going to give you about 12 seconds so this is quite a tight time frame if you do need more time please feel free to pause the video so please post your answer to question number two in the comments section below the video and I'll come on each day and mark it so which two numbers come next in the sequence you have 4 12 14 12 24 22 and you work out which are the answer options is it a 34 32 b 32 34 c 44, 52, D, 52, 44, or E, 28 and 26. The timer's on the right hand side and you have the time it takes that timer to go down to answer the question. Thank you. Okay, well done. Hopefully you got an answer and don't forget to post it in the comment section below. And as we work through these, if you need to pause the video, please do so. Question number three, another form of numerical reasoning test. This diagram below shows the plan of a building site. All angles are right angles. What is the area of the entire building site in meters squared? Okay, so how do we tackle this kind of question? Step one, what you need to do is split the building site up into two areas. So we've got area one and area two. And then we have to, number two, calculate the total area of each area separately. So if we start with area number two, the light blue one. All we have to do, because we've got the 70 meters on the bottom there and the 80 on the right hand side, is multiply those together to get 5,600 meters squared. Okay, now if we want to calculate area number one, we have to work out this side here on the left and the right. And to do that, we have to subtract 80 by 50 to get 30 meters for that side. And then what we need to do is do the same for the top 90 minus 70 and that would then give us just 20. So if we then multiply 30 by 20 that will give us 600 meters squared. And then step three to get the answer all we need to do is add the two total areas together to reach the answer 6200 meters squared. Okay straightforward now it's your turn please post your answer to question number four in the comments section below the video for marking. Okay, so we've got the timer again on the left hand side. I've given you ample time to answer this, but if you do need more, please feel free to use it by pausing the video. Question four, the diagram below shows the plan of a building site. All angles are right angles. What is the area of the building site in meters squared? Off you go. Okay, so you had a bit more time there to calculate that one. Don't forget to put your answer in the comment section below. Question five, which one letter will finish the first word and begin the second word in each set? So we have B-A-L and we want to know the final letter of that word. And it's the same one that starts the second word, I-N-T. And then C-A-L, 
which is the letter that finishes that word and starts the second one, ILD. Now in this one, it's relatively simple because we are given the four answer options below. So the correct one would be M because you then get balm and mint and also calm and mild. It's the same one for the final letter of the first word and the first word of the second, sorry, the first letter of the second word. Okay, you have a go at this one. So please post your answer to question number six in the comments section below for marking. Which one letter will finish the word and begin the second word in each set? Is it T, E, B or N? Okay, hopefully you found that quite straightforward. What I'm going to do now is make it slightly harder. So for question seven, let's make it a bit tougher. I'm going to take away the four letter options. So please put your answer to question seven in the comment section below the video for marking. So which one letter will finish the word and begin the second word in each case? Off you go. Okay, well done. Hopefully you're keeping up. Um, let's move on now to question number eight. Don't forget, you're going to get some more free resources soon. I'm going to give you these slides as well to download so you can start working through them. Don't forget to, you know, if you're liking the questions, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Okay, identify which of the following sentences is correct. They are all very similar in nature, but there are some differences. So A, James needed money and fast. He headed to the casino Little did he know he would lose everything. So we are looking for your understanding of these words here. T-O or T-O-O, -O, loose or lose or no, K-N-O-W as in knowledge or N-O. So you can see that there are differences there. And the correct one is C. James needed money and fast. He headed to T-O the casino. Little did he know, K-N-O-W, he would lose everything. L-O-S-E. Because L-O-O-S-E is loose. Okay. Question number, sorry, the answer to question eight is C. Now it's your turn. Please do post your answer to question number nine in the comment section below for marking. Identify which of the following sentences is correct. Harriet and James brought their father a gift for his birthday. He was very happy with their kind gesture. And we're looking for your understanding here of T-H-E-I-R there and also brought, B-R-O-U-G-H-T or B-O-U-G-H-T, off you go, which is the correct answer. Okay, well done. Question number 10. Now we're moving on to abstract reasoning questions. Which cube cannot be made from the net? So that image there is the net. Okay, that's called a net. It's laid down on the floor. And then when we make it up, we can make these cubes. So which of the four cubes, A, B, C or D, cannot be made from the net? How do we tackle this? Step one. What we have to do is take one prominent side that features in all four answer options. And we can see there that that part, that side of the net features there, it features there, features there, and features there. Therefore, we can answer the question. Okay, so what we now need to do is use a process of elimination to rule out which one option is the correct answer, i.e. which cube cannot be made from that net. So let's start with A and work across. We might get lucky and A might be the answer. So let's take that side to the right of that prominent side that's featured on the net. Now, that is where it will feature on A. So, if we then look at that line which is diagonal, in order for that to work on A, it would need to be right there, and it isn't. Therefore, the correct answer straight away is A. We've actually just got lucky that it's the first one that cannot be made from the net. Therefore, we can assume that all of the other options can be made. Okay, now it's your turn. Please post your answer to question number 11 in the comments section below the video for marking. Which cube can be made from the net? So there's only one of them that can be made from the net. You've got the time it takes the timer to go down to select A, B, C, D as your answer in the comments section below. Off you go.
Okay, well done. I hope you're still enjoying these. Question number 12. Which answer figure contains the hidden shape? The shape must be the same size and cannot be rotated. So there's the hidden shape, and these are our answer options, A, B, C, or D. And we are looking for that hidden shape. And it's relatively simple, this one. You can see it there in answer option C. That's the hidden shape. So now it's your turn. Please put your answer to question number 13 in the comment section below the video for marking. Which answer figure contains the hidden shape? The shape must be the same size and cannot be rotated from A, B, C or D. Off you go. Okay, well done. Moving on to question number 14. How much weight is required at point X to balance the load? And this is a form of mechanical comprehension test. So we need to find out how much weight we need to place there at point X to balance that load. So because the distance to the right of the fulcrum point is five times what it is to the left, we simply have to reduce the weight by five times to get the correct answer. So you can see there that's the fulcrum point. And 10 meters is five times what it is to the left. Therefore, 20 kilograms divided by five equals four. So the answer there would be four kilograms we need to place at point X to balance the load. Now it's your turn. So please post your answer to question number 15 in the comment section below the video for marking. Question is, how much weight is required at point X to balance the load? So you've got 20 kilograms on the left, and it's 15 meters and then three meters to the right of the fulcrum. Please place your answer to question 15 in the comments section below. If you need to pause it to give you more time, please feel free to do so. Here's the timer. Okay, well done. Don't forget to put all your answers in the comments section below the video. Now, if you'd like more tests, first and foremost, you can download these slides by clicking the link in the description below the video, or you can go direct to my website, mypsychometrictest.com, to get more free online tests. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and put all your answers in the comments section below. And I very much wish you all the very best in your pursuit to passing your psychometric test. Thank you very much for watching.